We'll apologize in advance for the quality of our data signal. Uh, I understand your location is very remote and we're doing the best we can with the communication connection that we've got. So people, please bear with us. I think you'll find the content well worth your time. Uh, Bill, one of the things we wanted to talk about in this environment where a lot of investable gold and silver are running short and running out in some cases, uh, people are concerned about should they pay up for the much higher premiums that are really running away on U.S. minted products. I know you have had a pretty strong opinion about that in the past, so I wanted to get your latest thinking. Is there any limit to that uh, calculus that you would make when deciding between domestically U.S. produced investable uh, bullion coins like American gold eagles, American silver eagles, uh, so-called junk silver, constitution 90% silver, or pre-33 numismatic uh, gold coins versus any other investable gold products available in the world. Uh, depending on how far the premiums separate, they're getting to be pr more extreme than we've ever seen them before the separation. Uh, help people understand your rationale behind that. Generally, people want the coin of their own realm. Uh, and the reasoning behind that, if, if there ever is a confiscation, it would be difficult for the U.S. Mint to sell you eagles this week and then next week say you have to turn them in. Um, if there's a confiscation, generally you would see uh, bars, generics, and foreign sovereigns confiscated prior to local or the, the coin of the realm. Um, and yeah, you're you're correct. As far as eagles are concerned, you're on what you're looking at almost 100% premium at this point. Um, you might want to try to barbell that uh, if you're looking for uh, metal. I'm partial to junk silver as opposed to eagles, and the reason being a uh, dollar 38 of junk, so basically 14 dimes equals one ounce. And in a system down scenario, that gives you 14 transactions versus one. In other words, you could barter for eggs or gasoline or, or what have you. Uh, so you might want to barbell your approach, do some junk uh, and do some 100 ounce bars or a lower premium product. But still, even with uh, 100 ounce bars, you're looking at four or five dollars over spot. So the, the premiums, the premiums are rising across the board. And this is really not much of a surprise. I mean, we had talked about oh, probably five, six, seven years ago, that at some point in time, the COMEX, the LBMA, the paper markets would become irrelevant. And we used an example in gold. You could see it $10 offered on COMEX with no bids, and you could see it many, many thousands of dollars bid and no offers. And that's where we're, we're heading at this point. The premiums are, are exploding across the board. And I think what this is, it's the beginning of the irrelevancy of the paper markets. Yeah, about uh, my sense of time recently has been totally messed up since COVID and the lockdowns and the stay homes and the everythings. But it feels to me like a couple of years since you were saying, when is now talking to people about if they're if they're asking when, oh, when, oh, when should I uh, exit the mainstream 401k, a 60-40 stock portfolio, you know, stocks and bonds, and get into tangible assets. I think your point back then was that, look, there's availability right now, and you don't know what there will be about availability in the future. And secondly, you don't know if when there's going to come this economic event that's going to make suddenly everybody else want to do what you're currently wanting to do, so do it now. I think that was your point, but could you talk to us about the timing of people making their move? Is it too late uh, for people to get started at this uh, if two years ago, when was now? Well, now you're watching these things unfold in real time before your eyes. Um, is it too late? No, you can still do it, uh, when, it when you cannot source metal then obviously it's too late. Uh, once you cannot, can no longer source metal, then what good is your fiat currency? That question is one that I think a lot of people have turned upside down in their heads. We've been conditioned for a couple of generations to think, what good is this, you know, what a pet rock, worthless barbaric relic of, of gold, I can't use it at the grocery store, etc. Um, but if you would please expand on that question you just asked about what good is your fiat if you can't exchange it for gold? 
Well, that part is obvious. I mean, if you if fiat is not accepted for gold, then it's worthless. And you're you made mention of you can't go to the grocery store and use gold uh, or silver. I guess my response to that would be where we're headed. And I think it's directly in front of us. I mean, it's we're what, uh, 17, 18 days away from the U.S. running out of diesel fuel. What kind of world will we be living in? If there's no diesel fuel to run trains, trucks, et cetera. In other words, the supply chain is going to completely break down. So I'm going to bounce that back to you. You're saying you can't use gold or silver in a grocery store. And I'm going to tell you at some point in the not too distant future, your grocery store is not going to have anything in there for you to buy anyway. That's one of the concerns that's had us beating the drum since 2013. Uh, our, our channel used to be called Reluctant Preppers. And that whole idea about being prepared and the saying being, I'd rather be seven years early than one day late. Uh, my wife and I were recently, just last month, down in Florida looking for a homestead and Hurricane Ian showed up. And uh, we had about a two-day notice to get get prepared because they keep saying, oh, it's going to go this way or it's going to go that way. Well, it turned out went right over us, but luckily we were far inland, not near the coast, so not in any risk of flooding. But the uh, the point that I'm trying to get to is we were suddenly finding ourselves, even though we'd spent years preparing at our home base, uh, there we were away from home and suddenly had to go go buying a bunch of stuff, you know, at the last minute, rain suits and, and bottled water and enough food to get by and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal if you postpone your preparedness steps until uh, there's nothing to be had. And that's a, whole, that's a whole new topic you're introducing. So you introduce it within the context of currency versus re- real money, the intrinsic value, things that have intrinsic value. But you're pointing out another problem which is coming which is basically the shortage and outage of many, many essentials and the necessity for preparedness. Uh, You live fairly remote where you are. Can you talk to people about principles that you've followed over the years on preparedness in general? Yeah, basically, uh, you need to have the mindset of of being as self-sufficient as possible. Do you have a water source? Uh, We have two separate wells and and we've put in a, a hand pump. So no matter what, I'm, I will have water. Uh, we've put in two separate solar projects. Um, I do have uh, generators as a backup to that. Uh, we we live uh, with a food source as far as a pond is concerned. Uh, there's a there's food source as far as uh, wild game, wild hogs. I mean, you name it. And I would imagine that will be thinned out pretty quickly. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of gunfire if, if grocery stores close you you out in the country you will hear a lot of gunfire uh, but i mean do the best you can stock back on on canned goods stock back on on uh on rice beans heavy stuff how long is this going to last is it going to last only two weeks two months i don't know maybe it'll last six months maybe it'll last two years i don't know uh, but the whole idea is to try to be as self-sufficient as you possibly can where you don't rely on others. And when I say others, I'm talking about grocery stores, uh, a fire department, the police department, plan on uh, going for a spell. And again, I don't know how long it's gonna be, but plan on a spell where you have no one to rely on other than yourself and the preparations you've already, already made. Yeah, it was a little bit sobering when you mentioned uh, you'll start to hear gunfire in in the country. I think you'll maybe hear, hear gunfire in the urban areas as well, but it'll be for a different reason. In the country, you're talking about people uh, hunting varmints for food or whatever, trying to trying to, to shoot uh, wildlife for for meat. And in the, in the city, it, it can be just just mobs uh, looting and rioting and things like that. Yeah, I think if you live in a city, it's a huge mistake, and I I think your chances of survival are very low. <laughs> 